I want to talk to you today about a project that I'm incredibly passionate about. It's not one that I'm doing at my institution, but it's a project that all of us, I think, need to undertake collectively. It's about immersive technologies, visual literacy, and the coming rise of fake realities. We've all seen the debate over fake news and images and social media and virtual unreality. Charles Seffi says that, for better or worse, the internet undermined authority. He argues that information can be, quote, the most contagious pathogen that humanity has ever encountered, but I disagree. Fake news and disinformation is nothing compared to the coming power of virtual reality to create experiences as real as reality itself. That future, our future, is right around the corner. You know the AOA's definition of digital literacy from 2012. I might add that's the same year that Palmer Lucky started a small Kickstarter project that Facebook would spend $3 billion to purchase. It's a good definition, but it's a definition for an information-based world. More recent work has been done by my good friends Brian and Samantha here at the NMC, but we've just scratched the surface. Our media is undergoing a profound transformation. Of course, you could argue there's nothing new here. Our earliest forms of communication were most likely visual proto-humans blowing ground pigment on cave walls, campfire lit selfies of their hands and the mysterious animals that they encountered. But in the world of Gutenberg, images took a back seat to text. We became species captivated by the book and our educational practices too often still reflect this. But the seeds of change were born when Louis Daguerre pointed his camera out a window in 1838 and took the first photograph of Paris. Boulevard du Temple is empty, ghostly, the result of a vastly too long exposure time. But a single individual stopped for a shoe shine on the corner, and unbeknownst to him, he became the first person ever photographed. Something like that is happening to us today. We are as unaware of how new media is changing around us as that 19th century individual was with his presumably spotless shoes. Less than a century a century later, Kodak made images ubiquitous, the Lumiere brothers made them move, Polaroid made them instant, and the digital revolution made them fake. Virtual reality arrived in the 1960s when Ivan Sutherland created the first VR headset. In a world of black and white screens, he saw the future. He wrote a visual display so real that the handcuffs in, media, in the media would be the ones that physically bind you. The bullet in the moving image would be the one that literally slays you. In immersive technology, media is no longer on a page or screen. We step into it. It hijacks our senses, becoming synonymous with our lived experience. No longer looking through the lens in Daguerre's photograph, you're now the one getting your shoes shined. Chris Melk, head of the VR studio within, argues that with all prior media, the trick was to accept the illusion, what we oddly almost perversely call the suspension of disbelief. But in VR, the trick is to remember that what we are experiencing is not real. The dawn of this new media, the triumph of the visual, is a unique moment in our culture. It's incredibly exciting. Learning will be profoundly transformed by immersive technologies in ways that we cannot begin to imagine. But the emerging technology of today, our novelties, will be nothing more than a wallpaper in the lives of our future students. As we enter this new era, we're facing a growing tsunami of unsettling questions. What is literacy when we no longer analyze data on the homeless but stand next to them in Noni de la Pena's hunger in LA virtual experience? What is literacy when we no longer read a study on a cattle industry but stand inside a slaughterhouse in Animal Equity's I Animal VR experience and gaze at the blood flowing past our shoes? How will students learn with these kinds of experiences? How will we evaluate them when the resource is lived experience? itself. What models of interpretation will we use and how do we counter the person who says they went through the exact opposite experience, equally virtual, equally compelling, equally real? Many of us think that any definition of digital literacy also needs to include content creation. Students will be our future storytellers, but what happens when they're creating virtual worlds? The stakes are much higher than you think. As Monica Belskite said, the media we create becomes us, the spaces we design inhabit us, the fictions we tell, if they are compelling at all, always bleed back into reality. Just as the internet democratized information, immersive technologies will democratize experience. So much for our concern about the contagious pathogen that leads to fake news. In hindsight, we will look back on it and say it was nothing more than a sniffle. VR will create entirely new realities that will shake the foundations of our culture and society, and it will require a new form of literacy, one as difficult to imagine as our future lives will be in the metaverse. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.